If I was to say, hello, thank you for joining me, I'm at Slaithwaite today, most people will think, oh, that's interesting, I wonder what we're going to see in today's video, where's he going to take us? But some people would be screaming at their computer saying, no, it's not Slaithwaite, it's Slough It. And those people would be absolutely right. So let's start this video again. Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at Slough It today. It's, it's spelt Slaithwaite, but it's pronounced Slough It. I'm at the railway station on the Trans Pennine route. That's looking towards Manchester. That way, it's looking towards Leeds. It's one of those staggered stations, and it's one that's been closed and reopened. It closed in 1968, but it reopened in 1982. What we're going to do in today's video, we're going to go and have a look at the Huddersfield Narrow Canal, because about three miles that way is Stand Edge Tunnel. It's the longest canal tunnel in the UK. I'm going to go down into the town centre, walk along the moors, we'll go and find the tunnel, and then we'll come back to here along the canal. Let's go and explore. I'm down in Slowit town centre and this is the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. Now looking at it here, it looks very much canal-like, but have a look in front of us. That's why it's called the Huddersfield Narrow Canal, because it is very, very narrow. It's a bit like the canal equivalent of a narrow gauge railway, and that's part of the route. There's a lock just there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the canal this way. Now the canal has been closed and reopened. I'll get onto that more when we're further up up the valley. I'll talk about how the canal was built, how it closed and then it was eventually reopened. The bridge up there is a modern bridge because it was eventually reopened in 2001 all the way through and that bridge there was only built in 2000 so it kind of blended in and just existed the town without the canal. In fact I think there was a bit of controversy here because they had to fell a load of cherry trees to reopen the canal but that's what happens when you close things that you later wish you hadn't closed. So this bridge here, Bridge 44, which we, we can't walk through, but that is, if you have a look at the stone, it says 2000. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just coming up to, well, this bridge here, which is over a roundabout. So to go under that, I'd have to get in a boat, which I'm probably not going to do today. Town centre. I'm going to head up that way to get up onto the hills where we get some views down and then we'll come back along the canal. So the canal goes that way towards Stand Edge Tunnel. So here we are, I've come above Slough. It is pretty windy so I'm shouting. I really hope you can hear me, but basically the town of Slough is down there. The valley we're following is up there. You might just be able to see a train in the distance. That hill up there, that's what Stand Edge Tunnel goes under. We'll keep going this way and hopefully we'll get somewhere less windy and I can tell you a bit more. A moment ago I was up there where it's really windy and you could hardly hear me. We've come to this little hamlet here and here is the old school. It's, it's a shame really because it's abandoned and derelict but you never know. I'd like to think perhaps someone would buy it and convert it into a house. What we're going to do now, we're going to go down a lane or a track called Hollins Lane and um, we should get a better view of the valley which the Huddersfield Narrow Canal goes up and so does the railway and then when we get further up into the valley able to find the tunnel so that will take you back down to Slough it. This is Hollins Lane now and um, typical country lane give you an idea of this little hamlet. So I'm just slightly further down Hollins Lane again I have to show you this it's windy the railway runs along there and so does the Huddersfield Narrow Canal you can see the hill looming ahead that's what Stand Edge Tunnel goes under and that's what we're going to go and have a look at there's three tunnels or three railway tunnels should I say and one canal tunnel so when we get up there, the village up there is Marsden, we'll be able to see what we can see of them. Just walking past an old farm, one thing I've found, if you're out this way and you need to use the toilet, I wouldn't suggest you use this one. It's quite funny that an old toilet survives. I'm not about to use it, but look, there's a, there's a flower pot in there. So yeah, just a bit of an unexpected find. And of course, over there's the valley, you can just see the railway. The train went along, now you'd see it go across. I'm going to continue following this path up towards Marsden. Slightly unplanned part of the video. I'm in some abandoned cottages there on the path. There was no fence, I just walked in. Come upstairs, up these stone steps. I'm not going far away from here because as you can see, it's holes in the floor. So that's what's interesting to feature these. Probably these would have been little farm cottages. Yeah, a bit of view across, across there where the farmer would have lived. Looks like a amazing old bed there. This is a stone floor. Come into here, look at this. Like an old arger. And that's, that's quite exciting. And then go through to here. See fireplace in the ring. 
So this is um, yeah, it's a shame really, but um, you know they're so in the middle of nowhere. How would you get to them? Now if you come outside, that's the footpath just down there. I think below and that that cottage isn't in quite such good condition. But you can see the stairs. It's strange actually. The stairs are in. Looks like they divided this into two at some point, bricked across. It's still windy out there. So um, let's go down here, back onto the footpath. A few little outbuildings. I reckon they must have kept the animals in these little rooms here. It's very small inside. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they're coal storages, coal storage or something. What's in here? There's another. Oh no, perhaps this is where they kept the animals in this building in here. So yeah, this looks like a barn. Anyway, I am going to continue down the footpath towards Marston. Well, the views are still great, but the wind is still quite strong. This is the B6107. I've come up across the B6107. The village of Marston's down there. I'm going to go for a bit of a walk around Marston Mortar to see if I can see one of the reservoirs. This is National Trust land now, so always nice to go to another National Trust property. I'm going to continue on in this direction and then we'll eventually make our way down to the village of Marsden. Well, I'm now above the town of Marsden. You can see the town down there. Standedge Tunnel is that way a little bit. I'm heading this way. There is a reservoir down here, Buckley Reservoir. So my plan is to follow this path along the edge of the hill and then I should be able to go down and walk down into the town that way into Marsden. We'll have a look around there and then we'll walk up stand edge tunnel but right now I'm just going to enjoy the view of the countryside and the mills and um, yeah just very, very nice countryside really. Where I am I've come down into Marsden now that's the parish church just there. I did see the reservoir I didn't go up to it it was incredibly windy so I wasn't able to actually record any footage but I took a couple of pictures have a look at these. So you can see the end of the reservoir. Now, this here, this bridge, takes us over the River Colne. The River Colne is the valley which we've been basically walking up the side of and the canal and the railway follow back down towards Slawit. I'm going to go up there now, up Station Road to the railway station and that's where we'll find the Huddersfield Narrow Canal again. Here I am, I'm at Marsden Station. Now this is a funny railway station, this one. You can see there's one platform here, but this huge platform, and then the main platforms are there now. The majority of trains passing through here pass through on those platforms. This is, a, a, effectively it's a goods loop, but some passenger trains call here. So if you want to catch a train, you probably won't actually ever use this platform. You, there might be one or two a day that do. So for, if you're a track better, this is a fairly rare bit of track. The funny thing was, I just walked in here and a lady followed me in, thinking that I was just catching a train. And then she sort of looked at the, at the um, dot matrix indicator up there and saw there were no trains due, so she left again. So she'd have to walk all the way up over the bridge and onto the main part of the station. So this is the loop platform at Marston. Now, talking of canals and railways and things like that, exciting things, we've almost back at the, well, we pretty much are back at the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. You'd almost miss it. If you look across there, you can see a pub called the Railway, Marston. You might be able to see the tower of the parish church. Well, the canal, believe it or not, is here. Like, just here, down there, look. That's the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. But there's something railway look, to look at up here. If we just walk up here, there's a National Trust building, which is the old railway goods shed. So one thing is we'll, we'll go and have a look at that, see what there is there, because the National Trust, as we have already seen in today's walk, own quite a lot of the land and look after quite a lot of the land here. Um, so yeah, there we are, that's the, the goods loop platform. And here, it's the old railway goods shed. So I don't know if we can, what we'll be able to see up here, but well, anything to do with old railways is interesting. And then when we go up to Standard's Tunnel, I'll show you more, tell you more about what there is. So this is basically the office for the area we were we were having a look at. So I'm not entirely sure if we can go in or not, but you can see it's an old railway. Good shit. Maybe, what is it? Is there like a, it looks like it's just, yeah, I think it is purely just an office. Um, but it's nice that National Trust have preserved this piece of old railway. Good shit. There you go. There's the... Marston Moor good shed building. I'm going to head that way now up towards Standage Tunnel. I've just come down onto the canal round to the back of that railway good shed. It is just over there, Marston Station's there. So as we head this way towards the end of the walk, a few things I want to say about the canal. One is it's called the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. So I said it's a bit like a narrow gauge railway in canal form. At this point it's fairly you know, usual width of a canal. 
two boats could easily pass but it's when we go through the bridges and stuff you can see what I mean by a narrow canal. The funny thing is I say it's like a narrow gauge railway in canal form. The widest boat you can have along here is seven foot which ironically is the width of Brunel's broad gauge but um, yeah and then this did join the Huddersfield broad canal so as we come into here we're just right next to the station. You know a minute ago when we looked down I was up there by that wall so we're currently down here in this narrow narrow bit on a narrow canal. The other thing they've talked about, we'll have a look when we get up, there, there were three tunnels. I'll talk more about tunnels when we get near there, or three railway tunnels, should I say, one canal tunnel. They talked about four tracking and electrolyne and transpennine route, and if they did, they could have reused those tunnels. Well, where places like Greenfield on the other side of the tunnel, I'm not quite sure how they would have fitted four tracks, unless they were going to reopen the Micklehurst Loop, which was a loop line, which effectively went off this line on the other side of the Pennines, or yeah, the other side Standard Tunnel went the other side of the valley. That's probably a video for another day, but I just wanted to show you here a lock, that's Marsden Station, a narrow, narrow and deep lock on the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. I'm gonna head that way now, up the Standard Tunnel. So here we are walking beside the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. That's the Standard Tunnel Visitor Centre. We're not far from the tunnel now. If you have a look here, this is the railway line. Says Canals and Rivers Trust, welcome to Stand Edge Tunnel. If you have a look up there, you can just see, well, you should just be able to see the railway tunnel beyond the aqueduct, which actually carries water. Well, of course it would, it's an aqueduct. What looks like a bridge is carrying water down over the railway line. It's from one of the reservoirs to the canal. So the canal tunnel opened in 1811 with a help from Thomas Telford, but it closed in 1944, but then the Huddersfield Narrow Canal was restored in 2001. You can here take a pleasure trip into the tunnel. As for the railway tunnel, there's three of them. The first one opened in 1848, then a second one, single track, was also opened in 1871, so two single track tunnels, and then finally, in 1894, the tunnel we had today was open. Now, if we go along here, you can see there's a waterside cafe, and that's probably where you can get on a boat to go through Stand Edge Tunnel, there's the tunnel. So I'm just gonna walk, well, I don't know how far I can actually go on this side, I can't go right up to the tunnel. I'm gonna go as close as I can to show you Stand Edge Tunnel. So this tunnel's on this side. I think the railway tunnel actually crosses the canal tunnel underground twice. So this is the long, so this tunnel here is the longest, the deepest and the highest canal tunnel in the UK. Of course, it's also flat. The canal builders did not have the luxury of being able to vary gradients like a railway tunnel would do. There's 74 locks on the canal and then this section's flat. However, I say the railway tunnel had the luxury of not necessarily needing to vary the gradients. Well, the railway actually chose to also have a dead level tunnel. The reason being, it's downhill this way towards Huddersfield. The other side is downhill towards Manchester. Steam locos need water. So you either stop for water or you take water on the move for a water trough. That needs to be level. So the one place they had on this whole route where they could have water troughs was inside the tunnel. So the tunnel is actually level. So both tunnels, all tunnels are level. We just go up here and we should see the railway tunnel again. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I've now got a three and a half mile walk back to Slough it along the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. It's been quite exciting. I've really enjoyed it from near Standish Tunnel, the railway tunnel. And um, the visitor centre, goodbye.